Hey guys, Distler Magic here, and by popular demand, I decided to finally make a video about this particular topic. I have to cover a news story I read that's absolutely amazing. The amazing part is that it amazes me that Wizards thinks anybody won't see through this thinly veiled marketing BS. Yeah, it's gonna be one of those types of videos. When Wizards does cool stuff, I make good videos. When they do stupid stuff, I make bad videos. Simple as that. In other words, it's called reporting the news. Oh, and if you're one of those people who consistently complains about my videos that are making fun of wizards and the stupid crap they do because you don't like negativity, go back to your safe space. For the rest of us that live in the real world and can deal with negativity like an adult, uh, keep watching. So, the bad news is that uh, Cassius Marsh, one of the Seahawks players in the NFL, in case you're not familiar, which is American football, he had his collection stolen, his Magic the Gathering collection. Now, the um, circumstances are really, really, really bad. Apparently his girlfriend borrowed his car to go to a nightclub and it was broken into like they literally just broke the windows, I guess, and uh, stole two backpacks out of it. One of them contained his team issued iPad, so, you know, no loss there, screw Apple. Why somebody would use an Apple product in any kind of professional field is beyond me. Apples are toys for rich idiots. Maybe he should get a Samsung Galaxy. Anyway, his other bag had a whole bunch of Magic the Gathering cards and at least certain decks, maybe even a trade binder, it's not real clear, but uh, the grand total estimated cost is twenty to $25,000. Okay, first of all, I've got to say it, I checked. Getting smash-proof windows costs oh, a little bit less than twenty dollars to $25,000. Maybe he should take security seriously. Second, if your girlfriend's going to borrow your car to go somewhere in a giant city, uh, maybe take your $25,000 worth of property out of it first. A lot of other YouTubers have made videos like this, but I've got to say it too. Don't carry around your trade binder full of X thousand dollars worth of cards in any place or any way that you wouldn't carry around a bag full of cash. I mean, people are like, oh, it's my trade binder, I bring it to every MTG event, and you know, nobody's ever stolen my stuff in the past, and nobody steals anything at my LGS. Just pretend it's cash, okay? Do yourself a favor and pretend it's a bag full of money. People will steal it. It is a possibility, even if it's a one in a hundred, one in a thousand, one in a million possibility, somebody might try to steal it. So, you know, keep an eye on it, keep your foot around the the like the little handle loop. I mean, whatever, you know, basic like airport level stuff that you hear about. Either that or uh, leave your most expensive cards at home. I mean, if you are not literally trying to trade them and get rid of them, unless you're showing them off at an event or, I don't know, have a reason to have them on you, don't have them on you. And see, this is the problem. If you got a $2,000 modern deck, you need to bring that with you to everything in case you need to pull it out and actually play with it. That sounds like more his case, so it really, really, really sucks for him, uh, with the exception of the fact that he makes millions of dollars. So yeah, he could afford to replace it, but that's not all there is to it. In fact, I'll just repeat what he said about it. In a quote, he said that it's not just the money. I've been playing since I was 11, and you spend the time building these decks and spending time with friends. Each of these cards you trade to get them or you purchase them in certain places, so there's memories connected with all the cards. It's just like anything that people collect that mean a lot to them. So yeah, I mean, he's so rich, he's probably not concerned about the monetary value. I mean, yeah, it sucks to lose, you know, five digits worth of money. Um, <laughs> by the way, that reminds me of the next video I'm making. Ooh, really crappy, blatant foreshadowing. But he could have, you know, had a rock collection that's worth absolutely nothing and somebody broke it and stole it and he'd probably feel the same because, you know, it's the sentimental value. I mean, you look back at a card and you're like, oh, I remember when I won that or when I, you know, came in first at F&M or when my friend traded me that or, you know, just whatever. So that really sucks. I mean, there's only so much you can do to secure the cards. I don't think what he did was proper. I mean, yeah, they might have been locked in a car and somebody smashed the window, but... You know, still, like, would you leave 25 grand in gear sitting in your car even if you had bulletproof windows? Probably not, because I guarantee you I could still break into it, personally. I'm not going to, but somebody else might. He said that a list of the things that were uh, missing were Legacy Elves, Legacy Goblins, <laughs> ouch, Modern Affinity, so, you know... No loss there. Um, standard uh, vehicles, modern walkers, modern Abzan company, modern John, modern uh, blue white planes control. I don't see Infect on the list though, so somebody's got to get these cards back for him. I mean, toss Affinity in a lake. That, that the less of those cards out there, the better. But everything else really ought to be returned to him. I mean, this guy is not just some like rich guy who got into it, you know, recently because he has the money and now he can just net deck and beat everybody. This guy has a Magic the Gathering themed tattoo on his left hand. He started playing when he was 11. 
This guy is hardcore. He is not playing. So anybody in the Seattle area, find this thing. Now, he had said, I won't even tell anybody who you are. Like, if you bring the cards back, I won't say anything. I would literally just take my stuff back and I'll give you two tickets to the next home game. I would be very gracious. Now, see, that is nice because it's it's just like, hey, no questions asked. You bring it back. We're cool. Yeah, you're a thief and I hate you, but like, I'm going to be cool about it and have two tickets. And that's that's pretty nice, except that if this was me, I'd probably say the exact same thing. And then when they showed up, they would wish that they were dead. I don't care if somebody steals a damn cheeseburger out of my car. I will make their life a living hell. Fair warning, if anybody ever steals from me and then I say, oh, just bring it back and there won't be any consequences, I just want it back, what I really mean is, it's a trap, I'm going to borderline kill you. So this is, you know, a terrible story, but um, it was made worse by Wizards of the Coast. Wizards of the Coast, which is also in Seattle, by the way, they were like really, really close, you know, God forbid they have to travel, ran him like $2,000 worth of cards, as they called it, a gift box. You know, and it looked like there was some commander decks in there, maybe some seal boosters, some, uh, I don't know, maybe they have some EMA laying around, rumor is. I don't really know what was in it, but I mean, two grand worth of cards, I mean, that ain't no joke. I mean, it probably cost them, you know, 10 cents to run it off, but, uh, you know, it's a nice gesture, except it's a load of crap. They then proceeded to take tons of pictures, notify every freaking media outlet from here to the damn East Coast. I mean, this was covered on national television, live on ESPN. It's on a website. It was on, oh boy. I mean, what wasn't it on? Seahawks.com covered it. Um, Washington Post covered it. Rolling Stones covered it. USA Today, Seattle Times, I mean, you name it, they made sure to get this to the media because, hey, it involves an NFL player, it's kind of celebrity, it's a feel-good story, let's run it, yay! So, people's first impression of Wizards and Magic the Gathering, if they've never even heard of the game, is, oh, cool, this guy got his collection stolen and they were nice enough to reimburse him, what a great company! So, to spread the ridiculous rumor that Wizards of the Coast is a good company, um, they, they did this. See, I mean, it's cool. Um, none of the cards appeared to be anywhere near, like, the type or even legality that the old ones were. I mean, you know, standard decks, okay, maybe. But, you know, whatever. So, my take on it, my opinion, is that Wizards didn't give a crap about it. They probably felt a little bit bad, but then they're like, hey, wait a minute, this guy's famous. He has a whole bunch of contacts with the media, and so does the team. I know what we should do, and they turned it into a damn commercial. I mean, they couldn't have bought advertising to get it in front of that many faces for the cost of the products even at MSRP. It's just free advertising, it's a fake feel-good story, and oh, aren't we just heroes and wizard saves the day, and I mean, come on. I mean, I feel bad for Marsh, but like, wizards taking the, the unfortunate circumstance and just turning it into like a marketing parade... That is almost worse. I mean, yeah, he got some cool cards back and didn't have to spend money, but he's a millionaire, so who cares? So, also, the gesture is nice, but it's so obvious that that wasn't their primary focus. It was just to tell the media about it. I mean, they purposely, like, notified all the media themselves and got them all together and gave them all the information. I hate to say it, but I don't think Wizards would have done it if there was no media coverage. Not only did they just, you know, kind of get the word out and make sure some people knew about it, they turned it into a damn media circus. The last couple times that people were, like, participating in an actual event at a Wizards of the Coast event, like a DCI-certified sanctioned tournament, uh, and they got their trade binder stolen, nobody gave a crap. Nobody from Wizards even sent them a tweet, as far as I know. Their own artists, one of their former artists was there selling some prints because they sure as hell don't pay them enough money, and she got her entire, like, backpack or box or whatever full of prints stolen. In fact, some people uh, covering the event, I think it was even one of the announcers, got his camera stolen out of his room. Or maybe it was from the announcing booth, I don't know, but people have gotten stuff stolen and Wizards is like, oh well, tough titties. Nobody got any kind of reimbursement, nobody got any kind of, you know, like, goodwill present, or even like an apology, or a, oh man, that sucks from Wizards. None of that, as far as I saw, at least. I mean, if your own damn artist gets your stuff stolen and you have to go to, like, Reddit to announce it and people have to, like, donate money to her on their own and it has to be completely grassroots, like, community started because it just, wizards can't be bothered to even report on it because, oh no, people steal magic stuff at tournaments, we have to brush that under the rug, you know, you don't want people to be too scared to go to tournaments, that is an absolute disgrace. 
I think Wizards' only reaction one time was that they told people to like really watch their stuff and keep it safe. Oh, but if you're famous, they'll 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 take the opportunity to make a damn media circus about it. The only thing that I could really compare this to is well, as far as for people who know about it, one of the most hated TV shows of all time. I'm not going to say the name because they really, really, really like suing people, but I have a whole bunch of inside information for various reasons that I won't go into, but tons and tons of behind the scenes information for workers and friends that work with these people and well, stuff that I've seen personally. I mean, they, they do, they're in the business of doing, you know, makeovers and, um, you know, they, they tend to build like a, a home for people and they do it in a pretty extreme manner. I got to say, but it's pretty extreme. I won't say the name of the show though. Basically, they come in, fake the living crap out of everything. They're jerks to everybody. They just come in and act like they're so Hollywood and way too important. They get their shot, and then they just buzz through everything, ruin everything, make it look pretty for the camera, and then leave, and the owners are just completely screwed. Then when they started getting negative press for that, they started sending a little bit of follow-up help to fix all the complete and utter screw-ups that they do during the actual construction project. Regardless, the vast majority of the people who are the recipients of the houses have to pay capital gains taxes on the value of the house and then have ongoing property taxes that are absolutely absurd and unaffordable. Eventually, the vast majority of them, from what I heard, have to sell the house and move to a more reasonable accommodation, but it's impossible to sell the house because it won't even pass an inspection because it was built utterly and completely wrong just to look good and fake for Hollywood. It's the fakest, most BS pile of crap pretending to be this charitable, awesome, like, Oprah-ish type of thing, and that it's all fake. 100% fake, just all the reactions are fake, the drive-ups are fake, the camera work is fake, the whole damn show is fake. That's what this Wizards news story looks like to me. It's just like, oh, we can take advantage of a horrible situation to kind of make ourselves look good by doing this one little simple thing and look how much publicity it gets us. Yay, let's do it for solely that reason. Oh, and then like pro players and artists, you know, they get they get their property stolen at a, a you know, a GP or whatever, or pro tour. Oh, well, they're on their own. Screw it. I mean, it's probably their fault anyway. They should have been watching their gear, right? So thanks, Wizards, for almost appearing to give a crap this time. I'm sure the same amount of effort was put into the uh, decision to, quote, reprint, and I use that term lightly, the uh, Eternal Masters set. Now, as for um, Cassius Marsh, well, that really, really, really sucks. I mean, wish it wouldn't have happened because, yeah, all the memories and stuff, man, that is terrible. I feel absolutely horrible for him. Now, I don't suggest anybody do this at all, but I'm going to do my part, and uh, if I see, you know... Something that looks like his, it matches the description. I'm going to, you know, ask some questions about it to the person who, who's carrying it. You know, Seahawks backpack or something, you know, full of uh, full of magic cards and decks. You know, I might, might be a little suspicious. Might follow that person around for a bit. He got a whole list of decks, you know, the Legacy Elves, Legacy Goblins, Modern Jund, all that. I don't think I'm going to remember them, so I'm just going to focus on one, okay? So I'll just focus on just Modern Affinity. So... Whenever I see somebody running Modern Affinity, I'm just going to, like, pick up a chair, smash them in the face with it, jump on top of them, you know, maybe drop a couple punches on them, you know, maybe tase them a couple times and say, where the hell did you get that deck? Is that Marsh's deck? And if it isn't, you know, whatever, like, I'm doing my part, you know? It's going to be really hard to find the actual, like, new owner, the actual thief of the Modern Affinity deck, though, because anybody running Affinity, you can already tell, is a complete jerk and the type that would, like, you know, be a criminal miscreant. Oh, is it going to be hard to filter that one out? Well, anyway, we're all hoping that you get it returned, Mr. Marsh, and I'll see you guys next video.